Good morning and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Monday, August 12th, 2019. I am your host, Dan Russo. Chief Market Strategist at Shaken Analytics. Find me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Shaken Analytics. Head over to shakenanalytics.com forward slash today, where you can sign up for a free email to follow along with this show. Get daily stock ideas for you to consider in your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities finished mostly lower in Friday's trading, leaving the S&P 500 modestly lower on the week. And take modest with a grain of salt there. At the sector level, the traditionally defensive healthcare sector and the bond proxies, REITs, and utilities outperformed on the day. Energy and technology underperformed. Treasuries were mostly weaker. Dollar was down versus the yen and euro, but was stronger against sterling. Gold finished down 10 basis points. WTI crude rallied by 3.7%, but was still negative for the week. So your outperforming sectors on Friday, healthcare, REITs, utilities, fins, and staples, underperformers, energy tech, discretionary industrials, comm services, and materials. As we get to the desk this morning, S&P futures are down 60 basis points, trading near the lows of the morning. Asian markets were mostly higher overnight, though Japan was closed. China was a standout, up nearly 1.5%. European markets are mostly lower here in the early going. Treasuries are rallying across the curve with a 10-year yield back below 1.7%. Dollar is weaker versus the yen, but stronger on the euro. Gold is up 50 bips, and WTI crude is giving back 1.2%. So we added the 50-day moving average to the chart today because we are now testing the 50-day from below for the S&P 500. Support is in the 2850 to 2900 zone in the near term. 2900 is kind of tepid support, in my opinion, if you ask me. The stronger support zone is 2,800 to 2,850, which is just above the rising 200-day moving average. Resistance is in the area between 2,950 and 3,000 for now. That makes sense. What's interesting is if you wanted to, you could draw a trend line here and see that 2,950 level is, you know, it's resistance. It's there. 50-day moving average kind of doing its job for the past couple of days, acting as resistance as well. So we're going to continue to watch those levels. And we're also going to be closely watching the character of RSI for clues about the likely path for the market. We've talked about this a number of times, but let's just reiterate, RSI has its own personality. It will shift, right? A lot of people think 30 and 70 are the levels that they're written in stone and that 30 is oversold and 70 is overbought. And it just doesn't make any sense. Because in a strongly trending market, the RSI will very rarely get to an oversold condition if, it, if we're strongly trending to the upside. And if we're strongly trending to the downside, uh, RSI will very rarely get to an overbought condition. So if you're waiting for those traditional metrics, you'll never get on the bus. It's important to understand the personality of the indicators you use. RSI tends to, in an uptrend, RSI tends to become oversold closer to 40 and routinely becomes overbought. So what are we looking for here? Bulls want to see price move through 2950 and want to see this indicator shift back up, similar to what happened here. See how it shifted back up and stayed above 50? Notice during the uptrend in early 2019, routinely stayed above 50. That's what you're looking for. In the meantime, shake and money flow is bullish, though has marked a lower high. So continue to watch the indicators for clues. They're sending a mixed picture. I mean, I'm open to the idea of just some choppy trade in the near term between 2850 and 2950. That's obviously a possibility as well. Taking a look at your market in a minute now. What are we talking about in the note today for Cheek and Analytics clients? We're testing resistance after a volatile week. We talked about that. Ten-year year remains under pressure, and we're asking the question, is there room for more downside? I think there is. We'll talk about why in a little while. Gold retains its shine in the generally weak commodity complex. Gold continues to just work higher. Growth concerns continue to weigh on crude oil and futures are lower to start the week. Taking a look at the power bars now from Friday. All major markets were lower on the day on Friday with small caps and NASDAQ underperforming. Dow, four bulls, seven bears. S&P 500, 90 bulls to 107 bears. NASDAQ, as we said, underperformer. 23 bullish or very bullish stocks, 26 bearish or very bearish stocks. And small caps, despite the bullish ratio, cannot get out of their own way from a relative perspective, really can't get out of their own way from an absolute perspective either. Small caps continue to underperform the market. And what we've been saying is 
We want to focus on premium setups within the market for long ideas. And given, uh, given the choice between two names, one large, one small, I say favor the large cap name. Small caps down 1.26% on Friday, 414 bulls, 364 bears. Bonds down ticked on the day, but they are reversing and rallying here in the early going. According to the chicken power bar, small cap stocks remain somewhat more bullish than large cap stocks. Major indexes are, all, are pretty bearish. Our stock of the day today, Horizon Therapeutics, HZNP, very bullish rating, close at 27.14, down 1.63% on Friday. Horizon has that very bullish rating due to very strong price volume activity, attractive financial metrics, strong earnings performance, and positive expert activity. So when we take the 20 factors, five in each of these four categories, we get a very bullish stock. We have a strong trend above a rising long-term trend line, but the pharma group and, and drugs have been weak. Right, so a little bit of a mixed bag here. This is an interesting name because there's the potential, and I stress potential, for a bullish personality change being underway. Rating turned bullish here after a nice positive earnings surprise, beginning, beginning to outperform ever so slightly, outperforming the market. Overbought, oversold, no real tell here. Big spike in money flow to the bullish side, as we said, above the rising long-term trend line. So Horizon's kind of a name... I don't think you need to jump out and buy it now. But I think you want to add it to a bullish watch list. And if it starts to become more premium, which it's not, um, it starts to look interesting. The personality change has my attention. It's not enough to prompt me to want to you know, write about it, you know, identify it as our bullish stock of the day in my note. I'm not there yet. Uh, but I am going to throw it on a bullish watch list and take a look and keep an eye on it. And if it continues to outperform and if it stays with a bullish rating and if money flow is still strong and the process that we work through lines up, then I think it'll make sense. Horizon going on a bullish watch list here today. Sector tracker, movement of the major sectors over the last five days. No surprise, REITs and utilities at the top of the list. They've been there for the past few episodes of this show. A couple of dynamics at play there. Number one, flight to safety right? Traditionally defensive area. And then on top of that, just the, the utter collapse in yields in the U.S. and globally, really, uh, leading the bond proxies in the equity market to outperformance. Materials is a group that we've been warming to, uh, catching a bit of a tailwind from the rally in precious metals. We've talked about gold. Take a look at silver as well. Healthcare, traditionally defensive. Staples, traditionally defensive. Kind of surprised to see discretionary in there, but those are the breaks. Industry, industrials, tech, and comms, middle of the road. Financials and energy continue to be underperformers. Energy is just an utter disaster from a trend perspective uh, across the board, whether it's the sector or whether it's the main industry groups, continues to be an area of the market that we want to stay away from. We're going to chat about that in just a moment. And financials obviously coming under pressure with the decline in yields, uh, predominantly weighing on the bank stocks. So our industry in focus today comes to us from the energy sector, oil and gas exploration and production, which over the past six months, you're getting back to that disaster term again, over the past six months, this group has underperformed the S&P 500 by 33.35%. And its power bar ratio, which measures future potential, is very weak. 32 bearish or very bearish stocks, only five bullish or very bullish stocks. It's currently ranked number 21 of 20, number 20 rather, of 21 subsectors that we look at. So the odds favor this underperformance continuing. Some of the names within that group that you want to avoid or potentially look for bearish opportunities when the setup is there, Occidental, OXY, Noble, NBL, and Concho, CXO, all have very bearish shake and power gauge ratings. And then just to give you a little sense of the group, here's XOP. The EMP ETF has a very bearish shake and power gauge ETF rating. See that up here. It's in a weak trend, right? You don't need to be a CMT to see that this is a downtrend moving from the upper left to the lower right below the declining long-term trend line. Look at the persistency of bearish money flow here. So even as it's been collapsing, the group is still under distribution. No one really stepping in. Uh, yet and, and, and looking, looking for opportunities. And, you know, you know our process. We don't advocate for bottom fishing, uh, but we're not seeing any really to, to speak of. 
continues to be a massive underperformer relative to the SPY, and we've been on this bearish rating since November of last year. So just a group that we just want to continue to avoid uh, on the long side. Don't be tempted to go bottom fishing in the energy complex. Turning now to earnings, Friday's surprises, YRCW, YRC Worldwide, missed by 95 cents. Colony Capital missed by 3 cents, and PG&E beat by 13 cents. Obviously, PCG uh, is a bit of a special situation at this point. So as we go deeper and deeper into August, we're going to get closer, further and further into vacation mode. Earnings season uh, starts to die down, but there's still some important names that are reporting this week, right? Cisco, give us a good read on the consumer complex. Same with the um, AAP. Uh, the other Cisco, the tech Cisco, is going to be the big name to watch on Wednesday. Uh, their commentary is widely followed, so investors can get a, a feel for what the tech spending environment looks like. Macy's going to give us a look at the consumer uh, AMAT and NVIDIA on Thursday are two names uh, that we want to be paying close attention to within the semiconductor space. So far in this volatility over the past week, week and a half, semis have held up fairly well on a relative basis. Should that continue, that would be a bullish sign for the market. So let's keep an eye. A couple of bellwether names within that group set to report this week, AMAT and NVIDIA. We'll take a look at Walmart and for your tread, you know, and then Deer on Friday. Uh, be another important name to pay attention to. So turning now to the charts, we start with the small caps where underperformance continues. The IWM, the iShares Russell 2000 ETF saw its Jake and Power Gauge rating move from bullish to neutral to start the new week. We can see that here. The trend here is weak below a now declining long-term trend line. Money flow is a mixed bag, but what's interesting to me is that in the beginning of the, it's been steadily declining, right? This is essentially a downtrend in money flow, successive lower highs um, taking place. Group continues to be an underperformer relative to the SPY. Now it is closer to an oversold reading than to an overbought reading. So for those of you who trade ETFs, I don't know that it's necessarily a great setup for a bearish trade, but this is more from a portfolio strategy and positioning point of view. We continue to want to favor large caps over small caps for equity exposure. I think if you're looking for ideas and you have two similar ideas, I think it makes sense to favor the large cap names over the small cap names. That's just kind of how we're laying it out. This underperformance continues. We've been vocal in our view uh, that small caps are likely going to continue to underperform. And that does remain the case. I mean, look at what's, I mean, we're not even close to all time highs, never even threatened the highs from last fall. Small caps continue to underperform. We're asking the question here, is there room for more downside in yields? 10 year yield below the 50, below the 200 day, normal kind of technical picture that we talk about. We are back below 1.7 here this morning, but it was only about three years ago that the yield was below 1.4 uh, back in the summer of 2016. And what's interesting to me now is globally, you have about $15 trillion in debt trading at negative yields. Now, I'm not saying the U.S. is going to go there, and I'm not saying we're going to go there quickly, but the fact of the matter is more and more global debt is trading with negative yields. To me, I think that opens the door for downside in the U.S. I'm not saying we're going to go negative, but the potential is there. And just from a trend perspective, it's, it's, it's a bearish trend confirmed by momentum, right? The traditional metrics that we look at. And it wasn't that long ago, as I said, it was only three years ago that we were down below 1.4%. So is there room for more downside in yields? I think so. Rallying gold hits over bot levels, very overbought levels, similar to what happened back in the June, July timeframe. Big spike higher produced a big overbought reading on the RSI, which led to a consolidation before the next leg higher. I think that's what you want to look for here. Gold maybe goes into a consolidation around the 1500 mark to work off this overbought level. Remember what I said about the RSI, how it shifts? Look at the uptrend. This has never become, this has not become oversold since this uptrend began back in May. If you were waiting for a 30 on the RSI to get involved in gold, you have missed the boat. Gold names continue to trend higher as well. Utilities reemerge as leadership. They've held support, starting to move higher as yields move lower. And on a relative basis, you can see they've broken a downtrend line and are now heading higher. 
relative to the S&P 500 while money flow remains bullish. Take a look at the utilities here, especially if rates continue to drift lower, we would expect utilities to continue to outperform. That's going to wrap it up. I hope everybody has a great Monday. I will see you back here tomorrow. Good day, everyone.